And now we'll begin. So I want to first start with an invocation. One of the things that I've learned from my teachers um, is the most important thing is relationship. When we're talking about in the physical world and in the non-physical world. And so we want to acknowledge the ones that we've come here to invite and also come here to chat about and talk about how do we enter into good relations uh, with our ancestors in such a way that they can support us in this world. And we're reminded in this moment of, uh, of that old Irish proverb that says that the, the troubles of this world <clears throat> can only be healed from the other world. And the troubles in the other world can only be healed from this world. And so there's this reciprocity of tending those fires of relationship across the realms. And so that in many, uh, many ancient cultures, this idea that community um, is not just the living, but community includes the realm of the ancestors as well. <clears throat> and so we're going to talk about community um, from that perspective. And we're also going to talk about uh, what I call the, the, the sweet grass of identity. Let's see if I've got a piece of sweet grass around here. Somewhat braided sweet grass, like this particular braid of sweet grass, where you have three strands. And one of those strands of the sweet grass braid is your, we could say your individual essence, your individual identity. And that individual identity is woven with another brand uh, braid of the sweet grass, which we might, which we could call your ancestral identity. And then that braid is braided with a third strand of sweet grass, which we would call that uh, connection with our ancestral lands. So these, these kinds of memories, the, the, the ancestral memories of, of identity that have to do with uh, the human ancestral line connections and also uh, those in which were the, the lands that they were embedded in. Um, and so those three identities get woven back together. Um, and it's often the separation of those three identities that causes a lot of turmoil. So I'm going to share a few stories of, of the three strands once we get started. So first, let's, um, let's begin with the invocation. <clears throat> so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes for a moment and envision yourself, or the way that I like to say it, is send your spirit to a place in nature that you know well. A place that you feel comfortable in, a place that <clears throat> has some resonance of home or belonging um, and let yourself go to that place, send your spirit there. And uh, as I begin to speak this invocation, um, I want to have you begin standing in that place and looking <clears throat> at the rising sun. Imagine seeing the sunrise in this place. And if it's not a place you can see the sunrise, at least know that the sunrise and the, and the sky is lightening up with the sun. <clears throat> so I'm going to begin this invocation. Ah. The first to acknowledge those medicine ancestors, those ones from all these ancient traditions that have helped us remember in these days and times. Remember how to be grateful. Remember how to be in right relationships with all our people, human and non-human peoples, living and non-living peoples. We thank you, medicine ancestors, for assisting us with this remembering, with this belonging, with this healing. Ashe. So we turn and face the rising sun. 
the place of new beginnings and fresh new starts. The season of springtime, of clarity, of curiosity, of wonder, of innocence. That place of beginning again, that place of seeing things for the first time, everything. We call upon those good medicine people of the East to help us remember how to be humble, how to be grateful, how to see with eyes of curiosity and wonder again, how to let go of those old stories that we have about ourselves or others that blind us to the truth of the genius and the beauty that we are. We call upon those good medicine people of the East and welcome them to this circle, this night, with much gratitude. Ashe. And now turning a quarter turn to the right in this place in nature that you stand and see yourself standing, we face the south, place of those warm summer winds of summertime, the place of manifesting our vision, of bringing into form that which we dream about. We call upon courage and action and impeccability and integrity. We call upon that place of the good medicine people of the South where our actions and our thoughts and our words and our feelings are exactly the same. We call upon that good medicine of the South that reminds us of courage. The courage to stand up and speak when that's what courage looks like and the courage to sit down and be silent when that's what courage looks like. The courage to not take ourselves so seriously. We call upon those good medicine people of the South and we welcome them this night to this circle to awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Ashe. Quarter turn to the right again, we face the west, turning into autumn, into the setting sun, into cooler nights in this northern hemisphere of the planet. turning into that place of the harvest, that season of harvesting and bringing in that which nourishes ourselves and each other, that place of initiation, that place of bright colored leaves overhead and on the ground that teaches us how to let go as we move toward winter. We call upon the element of grandmother water. With much gratitude, we call out to these good medicine people of the West. We ask that you awaken within each one of us that bone memory where you live as well. Ashe. A quarter turn to the right, we face the North. Turning towards the sacred mountain, that place of deep surrender and prayerfulness and grace and humbleness. That place where we let go so completely that spring simply shows up because we let go enough and for no other reason. We call upon the story keepers of the North, the elders of the North those wise ones of the North. Much gratitude, we welcome you to this circle and ask that you assist in waking it, awakening within each one of us, that bone memory where you live as well. Ashe. We look to the stars and sky nation, the great above, the grandmother moon and grandfather sun to our star sisters and brothers and others. Grandmother Moon, we thank you this night for your fullness, 
for having brought all of that which is held in shadow and bringing it into the light over and over again the way that you teach us how to do. We thank you for teaching us how to own those shadowy places that we sometimes rather not name and bring them into the light. We thank you for your brilliance and your magnificence on this night. And Grandfather Son, we thank you for showing up every day, even when it's hard, even when it's difficult. We thank you for those teachings about falling down seven times and getting up eight, always eight. And to our star sisters and brothers and others, we thank you for shining down your lights upon us helping us remember that we too can shine as a beacon of light by the way that we live our lives so that you could see us from out there. With much gratitude, we welcome you all to this circle. And we thank you for reminding us that we too are made of, of dust and stars. With much gratitude, we welcome you, Ashe. And we reach down and touch the earth in this place in nature that you see yourself in, that you imagine yourself, or that you have sent your spirit to. Reach down and fill the soil with your hands, the soles of your feet. We offer our gratitude to Mother Earth, Pachamama, for those reminders of home, place, and connection how to be at home in our own skin, how to be at home in our communities. Mother Earth, we thank you for reminding us that we too are made of soil and soul woven together. And that we resonate within our own body and our own bone memory with those ancient men and memories of the lands of our ancestors, the grounds that they walked, and those dirt distant places on the planet. We thank you for teaching us that scarcity is an illusion only brought about when we live out of balance with you. We thank you for reminding us that when we live in balance with you, there is enough and we are enough. With much grat gratitude, we welcome you and the good medicine from the great below. Ashe. And we'll call out to our ancestors, to those bright and shiny ancestors of the seven generations behind us and the seven generations in front of us. And we thank you for your stories. We thank you for dreaming us into this place. We thank you for your teardrops and your laughter, your footprints and your heartbeats left in the ground, left in the soil. And for those ancestors in front of us, We thank you for watching to see what we are doing here. So you will not know what to do when you get here. And may we be deserving of that accountability and that trust in the way that we live our lives. With much gratitude to those ancestors we welcome those ones that lived well and died well and those that are well in spirit at this time to this circle. Okay. And to the spirits of the land. And in this regard, to the spirits of the lands that are around you, the spirits of the lands from which you were born and the spirits of the lands of your ancestors. We acknowledge you. We thank you for coming into the circle this night. 
And if there are ones from those lands that you know personally that speak to you, let those names just come across your mind right now. My grandmother Maple. Grandmother Ivy River that sits beneath my house. Grandfather Oak, Mountain Lion, and Owl, Hummingbird. Sassy Crafts. And all those beautiful ones, those plant medicine people, those crawlers and swimmers, those four-legged people, those two-legged and those winged ones. Hawk and raven and eagle. We acknowledge you and we ask that you assist us this night and help us remember our place in this circle of life and that we are not separate. With gratitude, we welcome you. Ashe. And to the great council that sits on the other side of our fire stirring the coals and keeping them hot. We thank you for the way that you tend the fire on that side. We thank you for watching over us, for believing in us, for standing by us. Even when we sometimes wobble and fall and have a hard time believing in ourselves and each other, we thank you for keeping that fire burning. So may the way in which we tend the fires on this side be a blessing to all our peoples, human and non-human peoples, living and non-living peoples, with much gratitude. Blessed be. All right, so take a moment and bring yourself by opening your eyes back to our Zoom world, or maybe keep a foot in that other place. We stay connected there. So tonight's topic, the ancestors. I wanna begin with uh, sharing three stories with you. Um, but I wanna preface the three stories with uh, a context that is sometimes overlooked um, in modern society, um, a context that would uh, be understood by many ancient peoples or um, indigenous First Nation peoples um, who understood that when, when one dies, there are a series of rituals that are needed to ensure their passage. There are grief rituals, we could say there are ancestral rituals or ancestralization rituals, things to usher the dead across that great river as we might imagine it or see it. And so across time, the, there are still fragments of these things that still happen. Um, although a lot of them got eradicated by the church. Um, in some traditions, they still practice uh, meaningful and deep grief rituals and still practice other rituals to assist those in crossing over. So I'm beginning with some assumptions and a belief of reality in this uh, realm of what's called the ancestors. Rather than explaining a lot of that, I'm just gonna jump into that. Um, so as I said at the beginning, just like in this world, um, where we have uh, wise and helpful and loving people. And you also have a whole lot of people that are struggling and uh, maybe not as helpful. And we can think of the realm of the dead as being similarly delineated. <clears throat> so when I spoke the invocation, you might have noticed I used the words, uh, we call on those bright and shiny ancestors, those that lived well and died well, those that are well in spirit at this time. It's a designation that needs acknowledging when we're working with ancestors <clears throat> um, or working with the dead. It's, it's, a, it's a 
differentiation so that you don't just, it would be like opening up your house and going down to the local pub and say, you know, everybody come over, I want to have a, a meeting with y'all and ask y'all some advice about things and for some help. <laughs> and chances are you'll get a few good people and chances are you'll get a few not so helpful people. <clears throat> so one of the delineations that I uh, begin with, with my students and with talking with people is that this idea that when you call on your ancestors, you want to call on those that are well in spirit. And sometimes that may be way back because the, the, the lineages of broken rituals, of grief rituals or ancestralization rituals of these things haven't been properly done. So a lot of times uh, the crossing may have not been complete. And, in, and so in um, one of my teachers, Meladoma Some from West Africa, say when someone dies, there's immediately a divination done to see what happened and also to see are there things left undone um, and therefore certain ritual prescriptions that need to de be performed to respond to what is unresolved so that we can uh, not have the trouble that's in the other world cycle back into this world. <clears throat> so in psychology, which is also my background, they have ways of talking about this through things like, well, epigenetics and family constellation work, um, where there's this acknowledgement of uh, our lineage and the influence generationally that happens. Um, and there's also this acknowledgement from, a, from this perspective where we're actually talking about um, the, the spirits that are unwell and how that might filter back down across generations. <clears throat> so a few stories and then we'll launch into a little more information about all that. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll say, we'll call this, uh, this is a story of Frank. And of course I'm not gonna use their real names, but Frank lives in somewhere in the UK. And uh, Frank uh, contacted me for a divination and his uh, challenge was, he said, well, I've purchased this piece of property and, <clears throat> and um, I had this idea of turning it into like a retreat center or a hostel for people to stay at. And, um, but the thing is, ever since I got it, when I'm there, I feel really depressed. And when I'm not there and I'm traveling, I actually feel lighter and, and better. And I don't understand what's happening. Um, so in the course of the divination, um, <clears throat> what came out, and I'm jumping a lot of information, divinations take a while. So I'm giving you like what happens in a couple hours in just a minute. Um, what I saw was, uh, First, I saw his in his uh, had this image of his of the, his land, although I hadn't been there, and, and I'm over here in the U.S. And I saw an image of his land, and um, I saw some moist earth, like watery earth, and uh, near a tree. <clears throat> and then what I saw was a, a a spade or a shovel going into the ground and turning over the earth. And then I saw some bones. And um, so I asked Frank, I said, Frank, is there such a place on your land where there's a, looks like a large tree and the ground near it is somewhat moist, like a spring or a seep, it's like there's water. He said, yeah, there's such, yeah, there's a place like that. I said, well, this next question is gonna sound strange, but I'm, I need to ask you anyway, do you know if anybody is actually buried on your land? And, <laughs> He says, well, funnily enough, <clears throat> yeah, there's a story about this land. And that many years ago, 100 or more years ago, um, there was uh, a couple that lived here. And they had, uh, they had a child, but the child was conceived out of wedlock. And the couple decided to keep the child. 
<clears throat> and the child didn't survive. Um, died early in infancy and ended up being buried on their land. <clears throat> and I said, oh, I think, I think here's, here's the trouble. I think there's, there's unresolved grief. There's uh, this unresolved spirit. And, um, you know, there's some things that we can do to assist and, and bring some closure to that. And as I'm talking, uh, Frank says, this, this is, he said, I need to tell you something. He says, uh, you know, as it turns out, I am also such a child that was uh, conceived out of wedlock and kept my, by my parents. And I said, well, Frank, no wonder you are there and no wonder you're feeling all this. You are the best person to become aware of this and respond to this. So there were certain rituals that he did in order to bring closure and amends and peace to the, the little one. Um, and he stopped feeling depressed. Um, and things have changed since then over time. <clears throat> and so that's a story we would say of an unresolved spirit or unacknowledged grief. Uh, here's a story of uh, a helping spirit. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Rihanna, that looks a lot like my dog. And I thought, that's my dog there. <laughs> thought my partner was upstairs listening on the computer. Anyway, distracted for a moment. Um, so, story of a helping spirit. Um, got a call from a, a real estate agent in a particular town in the U.S. that um, knows of this, this work that they've actually done some work with me in the past. And they, um, they said, you know, I have this, this house. I often get called in to check out houses for some reason. I have this house that I'm trying to sell. And just I don't know what's happening. People aren't looking at it. It's a beautiful home. Something feels off about the home. Um, and the house uh, belonged to my fiance um, and he was previously married um, several years ago and his wife died of cancer and, um, and that's all she told me about the house so when I went to the house um, again doing a divination what came the information that came out was uh, first I walked around the house and I didn't, I didn't pick up anything that felt um, off. Actually, it felt really good in there. And then I walked into the one room, I happened to know the room that she, she got the diet home and I, and I walked into that room and it felt amazing. I even thought if I was to die in this house, this would be a great, this is the best room. I had this beautiful light and I was feeling all this stuff. I think this is, so far, I'm not sure what's going on here. And then I walked up the steps and there were five bedrooms up off this landing. And I saw on the carpet, there was this reddish brown stain. It was only there for a couple of seconds and it vanished. Um, so I just made a mental note and I walked through each room and still didn't feel anything. And then I came back to where the stain was and I stood there and turned around and I felt this wave of grief come over me. And what I realized is from that spot that I was standing in, I could see in each of the children's rooms, they had children. And I only could imagine in that moment that somehow she must have stood there uh, holding this information before sharing it about her cancer. I walked into the one room that I was guided in, did the divination. First name that came to me was, or first not name, but first word that came to me was um, Mel Melody. Um, and then the, uh, another name came to me, um, Emily and, um, what I saw was this person named Emily had this relationship with this woman and the woman was like a mentor and she was really, really, uh, a woman of great standing in her community. And I didn't know this. I just felt this and just, uh, of high integrity, 
Um, and I could feel her in the room and I even looked toward her and said, is there anything you need? And she said, no, I don't need anything other than to tell you something. And then I continued with divination. I got Emily and Emily and her had this relationship that was like a mother daughter type relationship. Emily was say in her twenties. Um, and then what came to me uh, was the word be brave or words be brave. And so I looked at my divination cloth and I saw on the cloth, there's a stone that has the word courage. And I thought, oh, courage. And then the word said, no, I didn't say courage. I said, be brave. And I said, okay, be brave, not courage. Um, and, uh, and then what came to me is uh, the husband knows this person which is now this other person's fiance knows this person and they're to contact this Emily and give them this message. And so, and that's all I got. So I started to close the divination. I said, if there's anything else, please tell me because I'm the way that I do that. I don't like to think about it. I want it to come to me as opposed to me thinking information. And so what came to me as I started to close out the divination, uh, was again, the words be brave. And I thought, oh yeah, that word melody, maybe it's a song. <clears throat> now, I, in, in modern times, you can go straight to your phone and, and go to Google and I typed in be brave song lyrics. And it's just so happens there's a song called Brave by Sarah Borales called Brave. And I played the song and when I heard the words to the song, I wept. That's the message. The message is, I want to see you be brave. The days of silence and not having a voice are over. Um, so I got all the information. I relate it back to the person. She said, I will tell my fiance all of what you said. I get a call back in a couple of days. And she says, well, it turns out there is somebody named Emily. And he knows who she is. He doesn't know how to get it. Hold up, but he's going to find see if he can find her a couple of more days well he found her and he set up a meeting with her and a couple of more days go by well they've met and he played her the song and the, emily's response was well that would be just like melody to tell me that um, turns out the girl was in this relationship that um the ancestral helping spirit was not good for her and, um, and she figured it out after getting this message and was getting ready to get married and called off the wedding and felt relieved after doing so. So that's a, a, a story of a, what we'd say an ancestral helping spirit, not so much one that needed assistance, but one that came to offer some assistance. Um, and then one more story. Um, of uh, this is more of a uh, an example of ancestral trauma that filters through generations. So I'm doing another divination with this lady over here. Over here is like Asheville, North Carolina, in the United States where I live. And um, and what comes out of the divination? I said uh, there was this. I'm seeing this, this massacre um, in your lineage. It looks like your mother's mother's line somewhere way back there. Um, and then what came up was very specific um, and it, had, it has to do with a story in Scotland around what's called the Glencoe Valley area. There was a massacre there some time back called where the, the uh, clan MacDonald was essentially wiped out almost completely. Um, and uh, I said, this is strange. Are you related at all to the McDonald's? And she said, yes, that's my great, 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 however great name, grandmother. Um, the reason she came to me was because she was in, she was in a relationship breakup and she started feeling this grief that never left her. And the grief had lasted for two years. And she said, I don't know why I'm still grieving because, you know, I'm kind of over that relationship, but I'm just in this depression, this grief. Um, and so once we identified this ancestral trauma of grief, 
she was able to respond to it um, and shift that. Uh, she actually ended up going over there and traveling to that very valley and, and doing some ceremony over there to connect with those ancestors. So the three different kind of stories um, in terms of the, the potency of both ancestral trauma and challenge and how that can filter through uh, into our lives, whether we call it DNA or epigenetics or, or whether we call it just the unresolved dead, what, what in some traditions or in Buddhist tradition might call the hungry ghost um, travels through family systems. And then a story of um, a helping ancestral spirit um, where uh, they came back just to offer some guidance to uh, a young lady they had mentored when they were here. Um, and then a, another, and then a third story of, uh, of Frank and um, something that actually was not so much connected to him, but connected to the house and, and the land that he moved into. So there are, of course, hundreds and hundreds of stories like that or thousands. Um, and some of you probably carry similar awarenesses or stories. So how do you, um, how do you enlist, why would you enlist and call upon ancestral support? Um, you know, in this day and age where I see a lot of people reaching out and calling on this deity or that deity or this helping spirit or this one or that one, I don't often hear that they have connection with their own ancestors. They somehow bypass that frequently and will go choose a, a figure of some notable deity standing in some other culture and want to form relationship there. And I think, you know, your, your, your greatest allies are your grandparents. <laughs> so if you think about it that way, that the, the ones you call on for everyday life situational challenges are your ancestors. Those, those are the situations they deal best with. And unlike all of these other uh, connections that people may have, the main focus of your ancestors is you. You're their main focus, not world peace, not your neighbor, not, not things going on over here, but you. Um, and so you can think about um, in terms of, you know, if I could go visit an ancient grandmother, ancient grandfather and connect with them and ask them, you know, what are the blessings of, of our line? What are those blessings? What are those teachings? Because you carry those blessings in yourself. There may be some other uh, information around challenges or, and, uh, and those things that happen in the line, um, but a way to connect with those. So um, I wanna offer you See if I can adjust my, okay, just checking my time here. I wanna offer you um, what could be called in, um, a way to connect with an ancestral helping spirit. Now, some of you may be familiar with um, what's called drumming, use of a drum and what could keep, be called journeying. Um, or for those of you not familiar, just think of it as your imagination. We're gonna, we're gonna take you on this imaginary journey. Now, when I use the word imagination, um, I'm not using it in a context of that which is not true or that which is not real. Um, I want you to think of, uh, imagination as the, the uh, communication grounds between you and the unknown or you and the unknowable. It's, it's how, they, how it interfaces with us is through our imagination, our inspiration. 
And uh, so I'm, I'm speaking of imagination that way. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, in a moment, I'm gonna pick up my drum. I'm gonna start to drum. And I'm gonna ask you uh, to, if you wanna do this journey with us, <clears throat> The intention of the journey is to, as I drum, I want you to imagine that you could journey to what we could call the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. Now it can look, you know, it can look just like this, doesn't, um, but it would be uh, a journey of an, an ascent. So you can imagine yourself journeying upward and arriving in something that we would call the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. Go up a tree, you can travel on a, the back of a, a bird, however you want to imagine it, but going up. And arriving in a place of ancestral helping spirits. Now, the reason I'm naming it that way is that um, in this place, that's all that's there. There's not trouble, there's not uh, unwell spirits. This is about um, kind of the realm of the helping ancestors. So in the journey, I want you to uh, choose a point, maybe in the future, some place you know personally, not a, not a place made up in your mind, but actually a place you know, could be a tree, uh, could be a fire that, <coughs> that you sit with and see the smoke going up. But I want you to imagine this place in nature and something that will carry you up through an ascension. And you would see yourself as I drum, I want you to imagine yourself journeying upward, 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 and eventually arriving in a place uh, that we'll call the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. And I'm, I'm not going to describe it because it can look like a lot of things, you know, however it looks to you. And then... Um, <clears throat> Once you're there, I want you to uh, uh, identify yourself by your name, your birth name. And uh, actually, before you go, I want you to decide which one of your four lineages, lines, that you want to connect with. Um, choose Intuitively choose the one that seems to have the least amount of challenge so you don't get distracted by thinking about the challenges of the traumas of that line but so it would be your your mother's mother's line your mother's father's line or your father's mother's line and your father's father's line one of those four with adoption don't worry about it just choose one of those lines they'll work it out on their end so um, you can just set the intention of which one of these lines that you would like to journey and connect with. Okay, there's uh, two pages here, so I'm not sure if y'all can um, show me that you're, you're ready. So I'm just going to imagine that you're all ready. <laughs> you made the choice of which one of the lines you want to connect with reason that's important, so when you, when you journey, when you go through the journey as I drum, you're gonna go through the journey. When you get there, you identify yourself by your birth name. And then you say, and this is the part that's, that delineates the line. If you're going to connect, say, with your mother's mother's line, you say, um, I'm gonna use myself, for example. I would say, um, I am Cater Stevenson Brown. I am the son of Nora Edwards. I am the grandson of Elizabeth Taylor. So what I've done is I've, by, by my name and by naming my mom and my grandmother, I've, I've identified the line. And I would say, I, and I wish to connect with an ancient ancestral helping grandmother of my mother's line. Now this is going to, this means way back. This is, uh, we're not typically talking about somebody close in. So you're not going to necessarily know who they are, um, but don't, don't worry. They know who you are. And so when you, um, once you've identified that, so it's your name, your, 
in, in the line, like your mother's name, your mother's mother's name, you've identified the line, and then the intent. I wish to connect with an ancestral uh, grandmother of this line. Um, and I would, uh, for the purposes of um, learning what is the blessing of this line, every line carries blessings. Those blessings may have been disrupted by trauma or, or challenge or difficulty, but the blessings still exist in the line and they may have been disrupted. So the request to connect with an, an ancient ancestral helping spirit of a particular line that can help you identify what is the blessing of this line that you carry. Um, and then, it, you know, you might ask, is there anything else? Um, and then just simply say, thank you. Um, and because we're doing this as a group, I'm going to, I'm going to drum for about five minutes. This is going to be a very quick journey. And, uh, you, you may not get all this complete in the journey and the drum beat, uh, it's going to sound something like this. Is that coming across okay? Anybody? No? Try it again. We can't hear it. Can't hear it at all. Let me try one more adjustment. Is that, is that working? That one works. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna drum at that particular rhythm for say five minutes for you to journey. At some point, you're gonna hear the rhythm change from this and I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna speed it up to this. When I speed it up, that's the indication to come back from your journey. Um, come back the exact way that you went. So if you happen to climb a tree in your your journey and then launched yourself on the back of a, a hawk and, and went skyward, just come back the same way. Um, and then we'll, uh, and then the drumming will stop and we'll land back here. And then I'll, um, I'll put y'all in um, breakout rooms to discuss a little bit about um, what you got from your journey. Okay. Any last question before we begin? Okay. So again, this is what we would call a, an upper world journey to the realm of the ancestral helping spirits. Once you have a sense that you've arrived there, um, identify yourself by your name, and then the lineage that you want to connect with, speak that uh, parent, so again, if, if I'm in, in this example, if I'm connecting with my, my father's father's line, I would say, I am Cater Stevenson Brown. I am the son of Thomas Edwin Brown, Jr. I am the grandson of Thomas Edwin Brown, Sr. And I wish to connect with an ancient grandfather of my father's line. So whatever line you're identifying, do it by your name and by naming your parent and your grandparent. Um, and, uh, and then one will present themselves to you um, in some form and uh, a, a, something that may be helpful is to not try and make this happen with your mind um, just let go and know that there's never nothing going on there's always something going on and every, anything is something even in the smallest thing is is important um, so it's more of just kind of opening your mind and letting it opening your senses and letting it come to you and present it, present to you however it does. Um, once they're there, you know, greeting them, you know, grandmother, grandfather, um, I am. And, um, and if you're not sure, you can ask them, you know, are you my grandmother? Um, or you're my grandfather. We're just talking about the, the pedigree line, really not distant second, third cousin situation. And then, um, and if you want some extra reassurance, you can simply say, you know, are you well in spirit? 
because you're in the realm of the ancestral helping spirits, they are your ancestors. They are well in spirit. Um, and then it would be grandmother or grandfather. Um, can you help me know about the blessing of our line? Because that blessing lives in me, and I, you know, I'd like to know what that is. Um, and once you have that, if, you're, if the journey's still happening, you may ask, "Is there anything else that would be important for me to become aware of at this time?" Um, and then come back uh, when I when I change the rhythm of the drum. All right. So if it helps to close your eyes and uh, turn on those imaginary uh, intuitive circuits. I'm going to start drumming. Let me get my timepiece in front of me. And I'll drum for about five minutes. All right, I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, let me bring everybody back. <clears throat> I want to put y'all into breakout rooms and where you can share a little bit about your experience. We'll probably be in there. Um, let me put y'all like 10 minutes and I'll pop in and out. Okay, so this should put about about four people per room, unless we have people drop out. I'll put it here. All right, and um, yeah, let's just share a little bit. Uh, you don't have to necessarily share the whole journey. There may be not be enough time for all of y'all to share that much. Um, but yeah, any, everything that you experience is, is important, even if it seemed very small. Um, so I will see you in a little bit. Okay. And Libby, did you end up in a room? Looks like you're still here with me. Tasha, are you there? I can see the top of your head. Um, so we're in breakout rooms. I'm going to assign you to one of the breakout rooms. We'll start our recording again. Takes a minute to get everybody back in the in the room. It's like y'all walk down the hall, and it takes a minute to walk back. Okay, I think we're pretty, pretty much all back by now. Uh.
Okay. Lost a few people in the transition of all that. <clears throat> all right. So I want to open up the larger circle for um, maybe one or two people to take about one minute, something that something really burning and powerful and life changing in the moment needs to be spoken. Um, the, uh, we won't, we of course can't have time for everyone, but anyone that would like to speak, Mark, I see your hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself and. Hi, Cater, thanks uh, for that. So I, I mentioned briefly that I, I requested uh, contact with my father's side mm -hmm. uh, going back and there seemed to be a lot of confusion and actually um, a, a gentleman from other side showed up and I just was curious if that happens very much uh, and I mean it, it was okay but it kind of surprised me um, yeah what happened I mean anything can really happen um was it the was the connection feel valuable yeah yeah I, I i got some information it was very helpful um i would like to go back at some point but um i would like to um i don't know figure out what's going on with my father's side of the family mm -hmm. the fact that the uh the fact that you made the request to connect deeply on that side might mean you have to go way, way, way back um, and call him like a really ancient grandfather of that line. Okay. And, um, and also it enter the notion that the fact that you didn't get someone is information. It's, it's something's being communicated by the absence of the connection. Um, and it could be something about what's, some of the trouble in that line that may need healing um, in those broken connections. <clears throat> but definitely going back in, we'll talk about that in a minute, because um, this being the first one, first journey like this for, for many of you. Anyone else? I'm gonna flip over to page two on my screen. Anybody on page two wanna raise their hand and share anything? Looking if to really see a hand. If there's no hands on this page, I don't see anybody. You're raising your hand and I'm not seeing it. Raise it more. Oh, there's one. Kathleen. Um, I've had this happen before, but I don't know, it felt different. All of a sudden, as you were going into the drumming, I just like almost passed out. I just fell asleep almost and I I could kind of hear the drumming and and then j just as you were saying something when we were coming out I got a glimpse of something and then I'm wide awake <laughs> so I don't know if there's something in the that falling asleep it was really heavy like walking into something and I was just all right, so you may um, may journey again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you'd want to go down the same line or try a different line and see what the experience was. Mm -hmm. um, but it does sound like you've had that happen before doing this. Uh, not necessarily a journey. It could be, um, you know, it could be listening to a, a, a talk that I wanted to hear. So it depends, like a spiritual teaching. Mm -hmm. um, I did get something at the end. Somebody did come forward and say something. I okay. just wondered if you had anything on the. Well, I've heard of that happening before where you just go in so deep, you don't really recall what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I just trust that something's happening at some level. Yeah. Um, that doesn't require your your conscious awareness to, to be privy to it yeah. in the moment. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I want to um, share some with you about now what. <clears throat> so the reason to different reasons to connect with an ancestral line. 
um, one can certainly be what, what are the blessings? What, are, what is the medicine of this line or what are the, the blessings of this line? Because you carry those in you. Um, what are the teachings, the challenges? Um, what things need to be healed in this line? Um, and you may know some of those about your, your lineage lines already. It's like, oh, in, in this particular line, I know that this happened or this pattern keeps happening between mothers and daughters or this pattern of, of feeling lost or disconnected or, or um, you know, reoccurring patterns of addiction um, or unresolved grief. Like you may know of some of those things that need healing. Um, but when you're working with clearing and healing a line, you don't work with the ones that are troubled. You go further back beyond the trauma, beyond the addiction, beyond the, the separation, beyond the thing that, that caused the, the turmoil and connect back there to the ones that weren't in that challenge. Let's say that the ones that live well and died well, that are well in spirit at, the, at this moment. You call on those ones to assist. So with this one that you just connected with, um, so one thing is you could do is you could do several journeys to connect further with this particular ancestral helping spirit. <clears throat> so one thing to keep in mind is that when you do the journey and you connect with the helping spirit, you say, well, why that one? Like I've had siblings do a journey and they came back with different uh, ancestral helping spirits from the very same line. And they said, well, how is that? And I said, well, the one that can, comes to connect with you is the one that carries the same medicine that you carry. That's why they come. I always say it's, it's not that they're sitting around up there and they say, you know, oh, um, Evan's here. But somebody, is anybody, somebody go see what he wants. Are you available? You know, no, I'm watching the ball game. You go check and see what he wants. It's, it's, uh, it's not random. It's more that the one that shows up, we could say already has connection with you. There's an understanding in many indigenous teachings. We say, uh, you made agreements with certain ancestral helping spirits uh, to bring a certain gift of healing into this world. And uh, you made agreements with the ones that also carry that same medicine that you carry. And, and that connection is there to help you to be and, and offer and deliver what you came into this world to deliver. So it's a very specific connection, not just random. So you deepen, once you have that connection established, then you deepen it. It's like any relationship. If you want to strengthen it, you got to visit them more frequently. So now you've got this ancient grandmother, grandfather, who is, doesn't have much to do and is waiting for their, their grandson or granddaughter to come back and visit, you know, and tell me some more stories or, you know, tell me more about this line or this lineage or what, you know, what other things can you help me to understand? What needs healing in this line? Um, again, you may know of some of those things. <clears throat> Once you do that several times and you establish that connection, like you have um, this connection established, um, then what I would encourage you to do is to, to bring what we call br bring it into the physical with a ritual enactment that is physical in the physical world. So this is a journey to the non-physical world. Now we're gonna bring it into the physical world. <clears throat> so um, one example of a, uh, a way to uh, do this type of, Let's say if you're going to do some clearing and healing work, once you have the relationship established, once you've gathered the information of what things in my line, in this particular line, need healing, um, then uh, then you're ready for the for the the ritual, the physical ritual, and that is. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you two quick versions. One is if you can do this in a place where you can build a fire. Um, you want to get a, a, a ring um, that we'll call your ancestor ring. Now, this is not a ring that came from one of your ancestors. It's just a ring that represents to you when you look at it, it's like 
relationship with ancestors. Somehow it speaks to you about that. Maybe it's one you, and it's not, has to be of any great monetary value. It just speaks to that. Maybe somebody will give you one or you find one or we'll call it an ancestor ring. Uh, the other thing you'll need for the ritual is um, 13 feet of yarn. This is if you can do this in a place that's outdoors. I'll give you an indoor version. If you happen to live in a city and, and can't get out and do this. Um, so you want to get 13 feet, which represents 13 generations and beyond of yarn. And then you want to get a rose quartz stone, small, unpolished rose quartz stone. <clears throat> and you want to um, go to a place in nature where there's uh, shallow running water. You want to do this particular ritual on the, the night of a new moon, which marks beginnings. New moons are about beginning time. And if you could do it on the first of the new moon nights, so generally there's three dark nights. And so on the first of those dark nights, you want to do this ritual. So you go to a place in nature. If you can go at, at uh, dusk, so it's still some daylight when you get started. Um, either light a candle or start a fire so that there's fire burning. And the other thing you want to bring to the ritual is a small uh, bowl that has some milk and honey mixed together. <clears throat> or you can mix it together when you're there. Take the yarn, which represents the strand of ancestral lineage. And on one end of the yarn, you want to tie the ring. And on the other end of the yarn, you tie the rose quartz stone. Now, the rose quartz stone represents the physical manifestation and connection with that particular ancestral helping spirit. So we're just talking about one ancestral line and one ritual specific to that line. <clears throat> you, set up, you set that into the water so that the stone sits upstream in the ring with the yarn goes down, so 13 feet downstream is the ring tied where the yarn's tied to either end, stone and ring. Do this in a place where it's not going to get washed away. Um, you have your fire burning, so now is where you speak your invocation. So I did a, a, a type of invocation at the beginning of this webinar. Your invocation is simply uh, a, a prayer, a request for, for healing, and it's going out to the particular ancestral helping spirit that you have connected with. It may sound, sound something like, you know, you know, I come to this water, grandmother, grandfather, to ask you to assist me in healing those places in this lineage where there have been uh, broken disconnections between fathers and sons uh, and all the things, you wanna name specifically the things that you know that are troubled in that line. Um, and uh, and I, so I place this stone and this ring in the water and I make this offering, the milk and honey is poured. Once these things are in the water, you pour them onto, uh, pour it onto the stone. So it then travels downstream with the water across the line. We say the milk and honey is about sweetness and healing. So your, your request of your ancestral helping spirits, please help me heal those places in this line where these things have occurred between where you are and where I am. And so the milk and honey is offered. It travels down the stream across the lineage line and across the ring, which is eventually what you're gonna have. Um, then you leave it in the water for those three dark nights. On the fourth day, you return to the, to the stream and you retrieve the stone and the ring. The yarn itself can be offered to fire, it can just be burned up. Um, the ring, at that time, you then put on your finger. Ring is this relationship 
to this ancestral line and this particular ancestral helping spirit into the healing request that you've made and, and ask them to assist with. So you put the ring on the stone, you can put on uh, an ancestral altar um, that you can create at, your, at home. Um, and one tip about creating ancestral altars, maybe you just start with a, a, a white candle and a white cloth and, and nothing else and mend the stone and just start from there. And don't ever put living pictures of living people on an ancestral altar, it's kind of rude. Um, <laughs> Don't want to encourage them across the across that river too soon, um, and not any pictures of ancestors you feel like are deeply troubled. Um, so you don't fill it up necessarily, but just start with the candle and the stone, um, and then the ring you wear. You wear the ring until. Uh, for at least uh, the two weeks following until the full moon. And at the full moon, uh, it's time to offer gratitude. So you prepare a meal. Um, and if you can prepare a meal that includes something of this lineage is something they would have eaten. You know, if you even can do some ancestry.com research of whether they're from this region of the planet, and they would have grown these things or they've probably eaten these things. And so you might make some bread or prepare something. Um, I always tell people I'm working with when I'm when I'm working with ancestors, I always know to bring chocolate and Irish whiskey. Um, they always have to go there. <laughs> um, or Irish brown bread. That was another thing. Um, and so I prepare a meal and make a little spirit plate, put it to the side. And uh, this the, the first ritual is meant to be you just doing it yourself. If you have children and you want to do the second part with them or family where you just tell stories and you can share, you know, I've, I, have, I have this intuitive sense, you know, that the blessings of this line that we come from are these blessings. Um, and you can share stories or that, that can be more of a, uh, a shared experience. Um, and then the ring. Um, the ring can be uh, actually used to do this ritual again with other ancestral lines, like one ring, but you can have four stones eventually. Um, but the important part is not how fast you do it, um, but it's about the relationship. When I started this, I said, it's all about relationship. So the relationship of the connection to the one you connect with in the journey, to really deepen that, form that, connect with that before you do the, re the, the enactment ritual. So that when, when you call on that ancestral helping spirit, you really have a deep sense of who you're calling. And, um, and you can journey not just to find out about blessing, but you know, tell, you know, share some with me about your life, about the lands that you come from and just anything that you want to ask to just, if, again, if you were, if you could literally visit your ancient grandparent, what might you ask them? And, um, and so if you're not in a place in nature, or have access to nature where you can do that, um, I want you to get the stone in the ring. And um, if, you're, if you're in an apartment, you don't have any access, uh, get like a large, 14 inch platter pan, something that can hold water. And um, use a strand of yarn that's seven, at least seven inches long, seven, seven or 13, depending on your pan. Um, tie the ring on one end and the, uh, the stone on the other, light a candle. Um, again, doing this on a new moon, have a little bit of warmed milk and honey and pour it over the, the stone and all the way down the ring, cross the, the, the line in the ring and leave the candle uh, safely burning for those three nights of the new moon. And then you just do the process in that, in that way. Um, you could do it in a tub if you're not gonna be using the tub, um, but that's a way to, to kind of bring that kind of outdoor nature ritual into like a city apartment or something if you don't have access to uh, flowing water, um, 
where no one's going to wander by and pick up your stone or your ring and walk off with your ancestor. Um, so any, any questions about the ritual enactment? Yes, Marie. You're mute, you're unmute yourself. There. Hi, Peter. Um, yes, I do have a question. I've done all, my four lineage already, uh, but there was this new ancestor that presented himself to me tonight. And I was wondering, should I repeat uh, that one, that ritual with this ancestor? Um, we'll get to know them first, you know, find out, you know, where, where, where do they reign from? And where, how are they, you know, it's, yeah, just get to know that ancestor um, and which line they're from and, and um, any teachings, blessings. Um. But I did, I had that conversation a while ago while we were in the break room. Okay. And he's on my father's father's side mm -hmm. and he presented himself as a very, like an elder. Mm -hmm. And um I was just wondering, should I should I do a ritual over with that lineage with him? Um, the ritual that I subscribe is what's called a, um, a reenactment of an ancestral line clearing ritual. So if you've gone into a relationship with an ancestor mm -hmm. to uh, request their assistance in healing and clearing any trouble of a line, if you've done that in the journey form, then, then the reenactment into the physical realm where you do the ritual in the physical. So if, if it involved any kind of clearing or healing, then yes, you could, you could do the same one with them. Okay. He told me to regain faith. Mm -hmm. So would that be a good way of connecting to ask him to help me regain that faith? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, uh, a good way to uh, regain faith, what I call um, activating a conversation with the sacred. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit different. Um, and the way you activate a conversation with the sacred is um, in this, in your situation, mm -hmm. um, in light of that connection and in light of that statement that this ancestral has helping spirit made to you, what action are you guided to take? Not with your life, keep it close in, in time and space, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, maybe this week. What action are you guided to take in response to that? And now this is, that's a different question to ask rather than what does this mean? We're, we're a meaning addicted culture. We love to seek meaning as if it's some kind of solid fixed entity that will never change <laughs> meanings like water um, so we want to go right for you know what is what is the action that i'm guided to take in light of this connection and when i say keep it close in the con to time and space it could mean oh like right now after we finish this this webinar conversation i will do that and i'll see what what action i'm guided to take um, and again, not necessarily with your life, just, and, and remember that the closer in and time and space you keep it, the less likely it will make sense often. Mm -hmm. It may say, stand up, walk out to that oak tree in your backyard and kneel down and look at the moon, you know? And you don't know why it says that, mm -hmm. but you do it anyway. Um, and then you pay attention to what happens next. That's what I call acting a, act, activating a conversation with the sacred is by asking that question, following that guidance, as long as the guidance is within your value system and within your integrity to do so, follow the guidance and then pay attention to what happens next. And you can, anytime you wanna um, activate a conversation with the sacred, uh, when you have those kind of encounters, you just ask yourself, in light of this encounter, in light of this moment, in light of this chance meeting with this person, what action am I guided to take, creator or ancestor? You know, and, and ask them, and then it'll come to you and you do it, and then you watch what happens. Uh, Will do. Thank you, Keita. Yeah. Anything else before we close out the evening?
So a couple of, uh, I'll type something into the, the chat box here, which is, I imagine that all of y'all have been to our website, Rites of Passage Council. And dot org. And I'll put my website, which is pretty much has all the same stuff, except the divination work that I do is, is um, on my website. It's not on the organizational website. I'll put those in the chat box. Um, so if you're interested in the divination work um, or receiving divination, just go to my website and you can follow the prompts. Um, and then, uh, or if you're interested in seeing what other things that uh, the organization is offering, we have some things coming up. We're doing a winter uh, storytelling series where we have several different of our staff doing a different story throughout the winter that will be on a webinar. Um, we have a, a really new, wonderful new program this year called um, Seasons of Womanhood that uh, is gonna be starting in um, February. Um, as an online six week course, then a weekend gathering, and then a, a quest uh, that will eventually happen later, like in October. Um, and that's run by four of our female staff that are that put that together and you can learn more about that on the website. And we'll be doing an ancestral grief ritual in the summer here in Asheville, North Carolina. And um, so we have some vision quest ceremonies. Here in the area. Um, as far as you folks overseas, at least in the UK, um, I have tentative plans uh, for a men's gathering over there in the UK. Um, and I don't have the details of it yet. I just know it's we're looking at the fall sometime in autumn. And, um, and then again, for people overseas, I may be doing other stuff over in the UK and EU. I don't have it on the calendar yet. Um, but we will be back in Spain doing a vision quest in uh, the spring of 2023 in southern Spain, which I just returned from. So a lot of different ways to plug in. And there's going to be a lot of online opportunities that are free like this just to, to enter into community for an evening for a couple hours and hear some stories and different things like that. So hopefully I will see some of you down the road. So I wish you all well. And uh, also offer our gratitude to the ancestors and to those uh, helping spirits of the east and of the south and of the west and of the north, of the great above and the great below. Much gratitude for all that good assistance this night. And I wish you all a good evening. Y'all go well. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Gator. Thank you. Thanks, Gator. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Leo, thank you for being yeah. the host. That was easy. Anytime. <laughs> hey, um, stay on the line just a minute if you can. Yeah, you can try. Um, I got I got COVID. Not so much to chat but i wanted to schedule some time to chat well i got covid so we're not gonna we're not gonna oh, hang out well. <laughs> um all right well let me know when you don't have it anymore i will or we can we can also set up a june a, a zoom chat if you okay. want how you feeling pretty good yeah it's kind of pleasant it's like a yeah. forest vacation <laughs> i did a, i did a journey with as soon as i got it, i just did a journey and i thanked it and yeah i asked what was here to teach me that's a good that's a good good approach that, I doesn't see, have to yeah i can see a lot of trouble i can see people could get freaked out if they if they resisted it it's pretty it's pretty powerful yeah so. it's, it's it's here as a powerful teacher yeah mm -hmm. is then your, your gannon well he's doing okay well he's the one that got it first i think he's doing okay. good <laughs> yeah at least it yeah. was shared amongst the two of you. Yeah, he licked my he licked my face, so I got it pretty quick. Okay. You know what? One of um, in terms of scheduling something, easiest way just go to my website or 
find an email from me and hit the schedule button and schedule a one of those free 20 minute calls and then wow. i'll see your name pop up whenever you want to do it well um well, i'll okay. just take a little more time to chat it sounds good all I right also, i can also help you on your land if you need help sometime okay yeah, yeah we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of stuff out here right. um this winter no condos what's that no condos no condos no right. we got that was uh I took down the big giant tarp of the Death Lodge today. Uh -huh. Massive undertaking. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, cut yeah. up some firewood. And um, yeah, I'd really love to build a permanent structure over the Death Lodge. That's my uh, kind of very open air with the separated middle roof where you can have a, a smoke hole. That'd be great. But that's, I'm starting to dream that one in. There's a local guy that makes those special tents um just down the road that's what he specializes in the sky tents i don't know what they're called but they, they'd be this would be more like a permanent like a you know you have like locust or cedar posts and then mm -hmm. a roof yeah that's like maybe nine ten feet off the ground on the corners and then a, a separated mid, mid section where you can smoke can get out sounds good something like that all right I'll all see right you down the road. Talk soon. Take care. Right. Thanks, Kater.